this is going to happen. Now, maybe they did. And there's times when we face situations in our lives where our faith is so strong, it's, it's ridiculous. It's like, Lord, I should be terrified. The morning of my surgery for my breast cancer, my son, he was able to be with us even though he was in college, which was a big praise. And he woke up that morning. We were in a hotel because I had to have surgery out of town. He woke up that morning and he's like, I'm not nervous. Why am I not scared? He's like, my mom's facing major surgery. And he knew why, because it was the power of prayer. But you could just see that peace. And there are times, there are times when, when we are, we just have that, it's totally God, where we are just walking. And maybe the priests felt that way that day. But maybe they felt like we often feel. when, You know, we're, we're going, we're walking by faith, but there's still that fear. There's still that apprehension. But you know what? That doesn't matter as long as we do what God calls us to do. <laughs> Emotions are not sin. Feeling fear, feeling anger, that's not sin. We see Jesus felt emotions. We can see the whole gamut of emotions. It's what we do with them or what we don't do because of them that can cause us to sin. So the priests are going to have their all eyes are on them, and they go and they step in the water, and the water parts. Now, Scripture does not record the reaction of the Israelites, but, you know, they, you got to believe there was some cheering going on there. I mean, wow, even though God said he would do it, but when God does what he says he does, don't we praise him? Even though he said he did, and he's always faithful, we praise him. So the whole Israelite nation, their faith was strengthened because they saw it happen. But whose faith was strengthened the most? Those men who got their feet wet. They were right there. And it's the same in our lives. When God calls us to go out of our comfort zone, and when he does amazing things in us or through us that no human being could possibly fabricate, People around us are blessed and encouraged. I'm sure we can all point to people in our lives who we've seen them walk through things, and we are just praising God and rejoicing. But the one who gets their feet wet is the one who gains the most from the experience. If we want to live a vibrant life in God, in Jesus, we have to, we have to get our feet wet. Yeah. We have to get our feet wet. It's all part of the plan. <laughs> Some application. What can we do? What can we pull from this and apply to our lives? We need to follow God's orders and do whatever he calls us to do, no matter what the situation looks like. The Jordan was at flood stage. But God said, go, and they went. And that's what we have to do, too. Sometimes it's easier because things look better in our lives and we have to step out. Some things are harder to do than others. Sometimes God takes us further out of our comfort zone than others. Is that true? Doesn't matter. If he says do it, we do it. It doesn't matter what everything else looks like. Second is we've got to get our feet wet. We have to take that step. And getting our feet wet is basically just a step of faith. And it's a step of faith where we trust that God will do what he says he will do. And has God ever failed anyone in here? Has God ever gone back on any of his promises? He doesn't. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. God is faithful. I, have ne I don't make promises. I remember when my kids were little. I used to make them crazy. Because, you know, it would be, you know, it would be a nice day, and they'd say, well, tomorrow can we go swimming? And I'd say, well, you know, that'll be the plan. But, you know, they're like, but promise? It's like, no, because there are circumstances that are out of my control that could cause me not to keep that promise. And so I would never make a promise to them. It was a plan. It was, yes, this is what we are going to do, but you just never know. But, see, we, God is not bound by that because God is all-powerful and he is all-knowing. So promise is only as good as the person making it. But when the Almighty says something, the scriptures tell us all the promises are yes and amen in Jesus Christ. So we need to step out in faith and trust that God will do his part. The final application is found in our, the last part of our text for today, which is Joshua 4, verses 1 to 7. When the whole nation had finished crossing the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Choose twelve men from among the people, one from each tribe, and tell them to take up twelve stones from the middle of the Jordan, right from where the priests stood, to carry them over with you and put them at a place where you will stay tonight. So Joshua called together the twelve men he had appointed from the Israelites, one from each tribe, and said to them, Go over before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan. Each of you is to take up a stone on his shoulder, according to the number of tribes of the Israelites, to serve as a sign among you. In the future, when your children ask you, what do these stones mean? Tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When it crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. These stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. What a powerful, visible sign of what God did on that day. What can we take and apply that? We need to remember. 
We need to remember when God does something in our lives, but it's not enough for us to just remember. We need to preserve it in some physical, tangible way so that others can praise God. Joshua says, you do these stones, it's not just for you, but when your children, and it doesn't say it, but we know it's also your grandchildren, your children's children. When they look and they say, what are those stones for? Then you can tell them what your God did for you. We need to do that in our own lives. We need to somehow preserve these things that God does in us. He does for us and he does through us. I shared with you that this year I've been struggling with breast cancer, although I'm cancer free, so Amen. praise the Lord. I don't think I mentioned that before, but I am, so we're praising God for that. And when I was first diagnosed, I was literally in a fog, I mean, for about the first month. It's just trying to process it. I mean, I did what I needed to do, obviously. You know, I functioned, but it's just trying to get my mind around this. It was such a difficult thing. And I, I remember God showing me very clearly, you need to start writing stuff down. You need to start writing stuff down because, and I knew it wasn't just, God doesn't want to waste anything in our lives. And he never does anything in our lives just for us. He wants to use what we go through to encourage others. That's why these Amen. events are so awesome. And that's why I know you've been encouraged, but I'm going to encourage you again. It's great to spend time with the sisters from your church, but meet some other ladies because there's some awesome ladies here. Amen. I've had the privilege of talking to several different ones, and that's one of my favorite parts of retreats, to just get to meet the women and hear their hearts and hear what's going on in life. So you can help carry burdens, but you can also rejoice and praise God in how the Lord is working in their lives. And so I knew I needed to, to keep a record. So early on, one of the things that God showed me, the one thing with breast cancer, and I don't know about, about other diseases, but that was, was very, it made it more difficult for me, is I assumed, you know, okay, you have breast cancer, so you go to the surgeon, and they say, this is what you do. But it doesn't work that way. There were a lot of choices. There were a lot of decisions to make. I mean, it was this big, long process. So from very early on, I knew I was going to need some form of surgery. But beyond that, I didn't know. And one thing that God put on my heart Something very simple that I could do, and I think it's important sometimes for us to be able to do something when we are waiting and we are praying. That's very small, small little things, but I felt like God was saying, start getting your body healthier in preparation for what you're going to face. Amen. And so I thought, okay, and I don't know if you do this, but this is what I usually do in, in normal circumstances is I go, okay, good, okay, I'm not going to eat any sugar and I'm going to exercise three hours a day. And, you know, we set these grandiose plans, which are impossible for us to keep. We just totally set ourselves up for failure. But God knew I was not in no position to do that. So one little thing that he showed me that I did, one thing was to start walking again. My husband and I used to walk several nights a week, so we started doing that again. And the other thing was just to get a cereal, a healthy cereal that I could eat for breakfast. I thought I could do that. So the one day I was at the grocery store, and <laughs> you know the cereal aisle at the grocery store. You know, <laughs> both sides... From, you know, from the ceiling to the floor, all kinds of cereals. And I stood there, and, and I was in tears because I, I couldn't even put two thoughts together at that point. And I'm like, Lord, I just closed my eyes, and I was like, Lord, show me what cereal to buy. <laughs> I pray about everything. I always have. <laughs> I believe in praying without ceasing, and so I try to seek God in everything. And I was just, I was so overwhelmed. I mean, it sounds like such a ridiculous little thing, but at that moment, I was so overwhelmed. And I just closed my eyes, and I was like, Lord, I cannot do this. In fact, I was so close to just leaving the store, because I just, not even getting anything that I needed on my list, because I was just, I was just in that state. And I opened my eyes. My gaze fell on a box of Total Raisin Bran. And I thought, cool, I like Total Raisin Bran. I haven't had it in years. <laughs> no, it gets better, girls. Because <laughs> if you're familiar with Total Raisin Bran, it's a big purple box. No, it was pink, and it had a big breast cancer oh, ribbon on it, because it was one of those products that's for the Susan G. Komen Race for yes, the Cure, yes. and I'm sitting there crying in, in the grocery store, praising God, putting it in my cart, <laughs> and I was just so overwhelmed, because it was a little minor detail, but God came through in a miraculous, amazing way. So as we're going on in this process, and it's tests, and it's doctors, and it's figuring out what we're going to do, and... Talk about seeking God for every breath. And when it, when it became clear that God was leading me, I ended up having very extensive surgery, and the surgery that I had was one that they do not do in the area where I live. So I needed to go out of the area. So first it was like, okay, where can I go? Where's the insurance going to cover? Because obviously that's a huge factor. And the Lord opened the doors for that. But then it's like, who, who, two different surgeons had to do the surgery. It's like, who am I going to get to this? I don't know anybody. And my doctor, the doctors in this area, I had it done in Allentown area, they didn't know anything. So I'm like, Lord. And I remember the one day I was really fearful. And I'm like, Lord, I, I was just, 
And God said to me, do you not remember the cereal? <laughs>